Igniting, inspiring, and evoking the fire within. A great deal of talent is lost to the world for the want of a little courage. Somebody may beat me, but they're going to have to bleed to do it. If you're a runner in the United States, for most of us, uh, Steve Prefontaine is kind of the pinnacle of what it means to be a runner. Always give it everything you have. Never let your circumstance get you down. I, I don't know that you could have taken a three-hour car ride with Steve Prefontaine because he would have chosen to run it. <laughs> Are you comparing me to Dan Aykroyd? I am. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I greatly appreciate that. All right. One, one for two. Like one very bad answer. One, no, no. One very, I would say a thoughtful answer. Thoughtful. 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 Very thoughtful. <laughs> it's not enough to me to simply just say, okay, it happened. Let's move on. To me, it's something that you could say, that happened. How can that make me better? How can I earn that scar? How can I take what happened and become better and make it purposeful as opposed to just something that happened? Easy go on, get you far. And those girls dig them stars. And they made you who you are. It's a cowboy of them. You're listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. On this episode of the What's Your Inspiration podcast, I have Donovan Russo on, who speaks about the release of his recent EP. Here's a track off the EP called The Lost. This should be fun. Here we go. There are some people that are searching for Something much more that they need in order to survive. So go on your way into my basket case and you'll see just what I'll be. And I don't need your support cause I got my family and we, we will be something great so go on your way and maybe pray oh wow and may the loss find the sun what I mean and what you do and why can we be friends let's all be friends whoa, 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 whoa. may the loss find the sun Find the stars Because they can Be great And we can Be so great So simple 
let it be So fixable And let it be So simple Let it be So fixable Because they can be great, and we can be so great. Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Today, I have former guest on Donovan Russo. Right now, he's going by Donovan Xavier Russo. Donovan, how are you today? I'm uh, good. Thanks for having me on. To all the viewers out there, thanks for taking the time to uh, listen. Appreciate it. Outstanding. Donovan has just released an, an EP. Uh, it's called uh, The Pet Project, and I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit. Uh, how did this all come about? Um, well, I was, you know, in the in the midst of, uh, you know, writing the screenplay and I was kind of on a temporary break from it to have people look at it. I was in some competitions or whatever. So I just had a free moment. I didn't want to kind of halt my kind of creative streak I was on, you know, cause I was in that certain mode and I didn't want to start a new project either. Cause it was just a certain draft I was on the screenplay. So I said, okay, well, I don't want to start a new screenplay. And I don't want to stop. How about this? Cause I've been, playing the piano I've been teaching myself since like January so I was like you know what I always wanted to write some songs let's see if I can do that and with my two brothers you know they awesomely you know they made me sound decent with the auto tune and all that mm-hmm. on the uh SoundCloud and the songs and we uh put together what at first was a five song album and you know we even had like a little launch party for it too but then there was just a few more that was like you know what I want to add this on as well and it just kind of went from there and it was just it's a really it's just another kind of creative unit that's fun to explore in you know, another tunnel that's kind of um interesting to get involved in so I, you know i love doing it and um yeah that's really the story behind it it's amazing to see all the things that you've done you know as, as maybe the viewers have heard before uh, an earlier podcast with with donovan and Dante Stefanelli, he is a, a former student of mine, player of mine, and has gone on to do do many things. I knew him as a, a, a baseball nut back when he was in high school, and, and now as a college student, he's a, he's a screenwriter, a baseball nut, and now a recording artist. So how about that? Yeah, it's crazy. To see how things develop. To go back, and I, we've talked about this in a previous podcast, but I wanted to ask you about your your main musical inspirations. Who are they? Uh, I would definitely say Coldplay, by far. You know, I, I saw them two summers ago, then I saw them this past summer, and um, I just really enjoy, you know, their music. It's a lot of, you know, especially, you know, you look at, you know, there's a lot of diversity there. You look at some of their earlier works, song like Yellow or Clocks, you know, it's very rockish and has that kind of, there's kind of a certain, there's a certain tone to compare to a song like, I don't know, something just like this or, you know, Pimp for the Weekend or something like Viva La Vida. There's just, they go, they go through these different intervals and these different kind of sounds. And that to me, it just, it really excites me. Then of course, you know, you have, you know, bands like the Rolling Stone, you have David Bowie, you have, you know, it doesn't even matter. I mean, even like, especially when we made the album, I think, you know, one of the things, you know, even, you know, talking to my brother Noah, who was produced on, on it, you know, he's a big fan of Logic, and it's it's more about, you know, really putting, you know, really ma- making sure each song counts, and not having any fillers or anything like that, and, you know, 
guys like Coldplay who are my, you know, why admire, you know, I, I just love what they've done, how they continue to grow and try different things, you know, because yeah, on, on an album where they have, you know, look, you look at their 2014 album, Ghost Story, they have a song in there, like uh, Magic or whatever, you know, slow type song, then they have a song like Sky Full of Stars, which is very EDM-ish, so I just think it's great to do that, you know, my next album, we're even going to explore stuff like that. I, I think it's great when you don't limit yourself to one genre of rock or pop or rap when you can do you can kind of dip in and out of these different things that kind of opens up whole new areas of opportunity you know it's always one of those things you're all about diversity you mentioned the, the phrase or the acronym EDM is that correct yes Explo electric dance music electric dance music I was going to have you explain uh, uh, what that is but you just did that so uh, thank you very much no problem <laughs> You've, you've covered a lot. I'd like to ask you about what what is the process process of a recording an EP like? Um, you know, it's interesting. I was actually talking about this. I don't remember who, but I was talking to somebody the other day, and it's for me. It, it, it was it's a completely different project say than you know writing a screenplay because writing a screenplay you're looking at such an end game. Okay, I want to have this draft done by here, and the rewrites here, and then other rewrites, and it's you know. Sooner or later, you have 10 drafts, and it's okay. Well, now where can I go with this? But with the song, at least for me, there's not nearly as much planning and outlining and kind of exploring the characters and the plot lines. It's more about, hey, do I have a key? You know, do I have you know, a rhythm? Do I have something? And then I go from there, and you just build off of it. So kind of like that momentum. So for me, that's, you know, every song is different. You know, some songs take 10 minutes to write. Some take a few days to write, you know. So it's just one of those, it's, it's, for me, it definitely is two different processes and it's all about, I guess, the momentum. And, you know, I was watching this YouTube video a few weeks ago on what separates, you know, quote unquote, real writers from fake writers. And by all means, I'm not saying, um, you know, on any level of superiority at all, I'm still an amateur by all means, but they said that what separates it is just this idea of avoiding the resistance and you know, not looking for inspiration because inspiration is not necessarily going to come, but saying, hey, I'm going to sit down today, I'm going to do this. And then when, once you get rolling, once you take that first step, the ball gets rolling in a sense. You know what I mean? I agree. I From from my experiences as a writer and an amateur songwriter, I feel the same way. You have to do it even when you don't want to do it. Exactly. The, the time is never right. It's a craft. It's a craft, and you know from, from, from sports and specifically the game of baseball, you have to be at your best when you feel your worst. And there's really not much difference between that and, 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 and writing to me at all. Of course. No, you're right, 110%. So, so yeah, and you've, you've, you've grinded it out, man. You've spent hours and hours and hours, and I think over the past three years since you've been in college, just working on this, this art, whether it be – screenwriting or music itself it's very yeah. very impressive very impressive thank you you know it's just every day you know i always have a to-do list every day of everything i have to do whether it's a homework assignment whether it's you know a workout or whether it's you know, you know working on my screenplays and the music you know i'll sit down and go tonight i want to try and generate some sort of idea for a new song i think it's important you know because you know and again i I take this to heart, you know, I know I'm far from a genius, I'm far from perfect, you know, none of us are. I call I you can, young genius. <laughs> but if I can just be good, you know, not even, if I can just be good, if I can say, hey, I gave it my all today, I'm trying my best, then I mean, what else is there to say, you know? It comes down to that, you know, and that's with the song or screen, because, you know, there was a time, especially with my screenplays, where I have this anxiety of, what if it's not good enough, Why don't, what if I don't win a competition or any of that? And, you know, of course, you know, being a young writer, you face a lot of failure, but it's literally me giving the best I've got. And it's all about learning, you know, what, what did I learn from this? I think that is definitely the approach. And I think that, you know, just keep, keep going. You know, I, I said this, somebody said to me, you're always busy. And I said, you know, if you're not busy, you're not doing it right. If you're not tired, you're just not doing it right. Especially at 20 years old, I'm not a young boy anymore. I, I should have stuff every day that I need to get done, just like, you know, I'm sure you feel the same way, you know? Well, I, I'm much older than you. You said you're, you're, you're not young anymore. I, I would, I would give a lot to be your age, but I of would not course, want to. I'm not 
as young as they got a toddler or you know, young kid is what I'm trying That's to say. true. That's true. I, I, I would definitely want to be 20 again, but I would not want to be as dumb as I was when I was 20. But you, you, you've certainly sur- surpassed me in terms of your intelligence. You are, you are, you have much more wisdom than I had when I was twenty. Uh, what I would would have given to be where where you are at twenty, Donovan. At the top of the the, the podcast today, we played uh, your song, one of your songs from the Pet Project called "The Lost." My favorite one. Your favorite one. That, that's why I put it up there. I I sort of felt that way. Brief us on the lyrics and sort of what inspired you to create the song. Well, it was funny because I actually, I had, you know, I had a certain chord and, you know, don't ask me what chord is because off the top of my head, you know, I'd have to, it's just one of those things where I have it memorized, but I can't, I just sit down and play it, you know what I mean? So it was one of those things where I just had this unique chord. It was, you know, I don't even know what was going on in the world or the news, but if you, you get a sense that, no matter what party you support or anything, there is a lot of anger and a lot of, you know, kind of two sides and everybody's kind of clashing heads. And I think that the song probably just going for is this idea of, Hey, you know, let people be people as long as they're, you know, law abiding citizens who aren't doing anything to harm anybody in society, let them be. And, you know, they can be great. We can be great. We can all be great. And they're just saying, you know, let the lost, in a sense, you know, calling, I guess, kind of using, you know, the term the lost to kind of symbolize people that are misunderstood, people that don't, you know, who are, you know, being criticized deeply right now. And I don't want to, you know, get the politics or anything like that. But it was more of just, hey, let everybody be everybody. And, you know, that's okay. And we can all be great. We can all live in this world and we can all kind of get along, I think, you know. Very Coldplay-ish. It's, I, we, can, we can hear the Coldplay influence, but I, I think what you're saying is the, we coexist, we'll coexist better if we just allow people to be themselves. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't have said it better. Well, that's just what I do on this podcast. Try to paraphrase, but you, you're extremely well-spoken. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your, your, the next track we'll play on this podcast called Playgrounds. Okay. And... I wanted to ask you about playgrounds and more or less this. How important do you think lyrics are to music? Um, well, I think on the surface you could say, yeah, it's you know super important, you know, what the song about it. But I think it, I think it goes far deeper than that. I think it's not really about the lyrics or the music. It's more about what it means to the person. I think, and I think that maybe I'm going off topic here, but this even goes to the auto tune. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm, you know, a great singer. You know, there's clearly auto tune in my songs, but I think it's all about the universal message within a song and whether it's, you know, a song, a poem, you know, a story, a movie. It's all about how does it make the person watching it or reading it or listening to it, how does it make them reflect on their own lives? How does it force them to grow intellectually and how to grow spiritually? And I think that's what it's about. So for me, I think whether it's the song, you know, the music, the lyrics, it's all about how it makes the person grow. Because it's this, you know, music or any any type of art goes far beyond its creator, in my opinion. It's not about me. It's not about, it's all about what it does for you. And so whether you like the lyrics of it, whether you like the music of it, it's it's whatever works for you. So to answer your question, it's it's a case-by-case basis, I think. You know what I mean? Hopefully I answered it somewhat correctly. Well, there's no, there's no correct answer. I, I love your answer, and you're just, you're, you're pointing to something to me that says we will never know the influence of, of, of what we do, especially in music. It, it, it's scary because it's, it's yeah. going to go on. If, if it's done very, very well, it's going to go on much longer after we're gone. Definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, for me, because I think of personal songs that I love to listen to. And- there's just different things about each one of them. And some of them, it's the lyrics. Some of them, it's the music. Some of them, it's just the message kind of hidden in there. So, it's, you know what I mean? It's one of those things. I concur, Young Genius. I totally concur. And <laughs> with, with with that, I would like you to introduce the song Playgrounds. Uh, what do you mean by introduce? Yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on right now. It's going to come on no, right, right after this. So no. I would like you to introduce your song Playgrounds. Okay. Well, basically, it's a song. I actually wrote it for my mom's birthday, which back in 
number. And it basically just says the kind of a similar, not exactly, but similar message to the song The Lost, which is embrace love, you know, you know, you have a family that loves you and but don't get overwhelmed. And just simple messages like that. And it was um yeah, it's a nice song, it's a fun song to play. And um you know, it's interesting because some of these songs too, a song like Playgrounds, when I play it live, it does it is a bit different from the recorded version. Whether it, it just some of the notes are carried a bit farther, so it's just kind of interesting when you hear both of them together. But yeah, it's a nice, you know, it's a it's a good um it's a good song. It's a nice song, I guess. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, the viewers uh, agree. I totally agree. And without further ado, off the pet the EP the Pet Project. This is Donovan Xavier Russo's song, Playgrounds. Looking for love, are you looking for hope? Are you looking for someone to show you the ropes? Cause the world is your playground. And day to fight and say that we love you oh we love you because the world Birthday, mom. And we are back. That was Donovan Xavier Russo's track Playgrounds off the Pet Project. D Man, I wanted to ask you, what do you want listeners to take from that track? Um again, you just embrace uh, love, embrace your family, your friends, and you know there's people out there that care about you and um there's always a bright day ahead, and uh, live each day with a smile, I guess. Have fun each day, or try to have fun each day. Be the best person you could be each day. How about that? Got you. The world it, can be your playground if you allow it to be. And I want. I love playgrounds, man. So I love that track. Love both your tracks we've played on so far. Is there any hidden meaning on the playgrounds track? Meaning, is there anything in there that's just yours that no one will ever figure out? Really, I think uh, I think that what I said it kind of sums it up. I mean, look, you can dissect any piece of literature, whether it's a poem, a song, for you know, for centuries. You know, you could always find you stuff making different arguments about what the author or owner is trying to convey. But it's more about you know, like I said, what it does for each person, what it means to you, can mean something completely different to one of the viewers or myself. So that's kind of the beauty of it, I think. And I think everything I said, I think that's pretty much really it about it. You know what I mean? You've you've covered the whole gamut with with your 
with your two tracks on this prod, uh, on on this podcast, The Lost and Playgrounds. And now, Donovan, it is time for our game, What, Which, and Where. Are you familiar with it? A little bit. I remember a little bit. Good. So I will, I'll give you a line maybe from a song or just a powerful quote, and I want you to tell us where it came from. And we have actually two today, so an abbreviated version, but yet we're going to mix baseball with music. So that's going to be our theme. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Outstanding. Outstanding. So here we go. I want you to name this lyric, maybe the group or who it came from. It goes like this. Well, I love that dirty water. Oh, Boston, you're my home. Oh, I have no clue. You certainly do. You, you just don't know it. I'll say it again. Well, I love that dirty water. Oh, Boston, you are my home. You're saying I know the artist? You, you definitely know the artist. You just don't know he's an artist. I think that's the problem. Ha! Is it you? You certainly do. Is it, is it you? It's not, it's not me. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would love it if that was me, but it's not. Because this boy can sing. And he had a really good sinker. And I love his first name. Don't beat yourself up. Just, just blurt out an answer. So I'm going to say this. He, he's, he, he pitched in the major leagues for a number of years and is also a recording artist. Oh, is it David Wells? That was, that's a great guess, but it is not David Wells. Who is it? It is none other than Bronson Arroyo and his song, Dirty Water. No, I never heard that. But you know, you know Bronson Arroyo, right? Uh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, I've seen him pitch. Of course, of course. You've seen a pitch many times, but yes, that's his recording. Uh, dirty. I'm sorry? I've seen him at Yankee Stadium pitch. You've seen him pitch, I, I would have thought, a number of times uh, with with uh, with Boston or Cincinnati. So, yes, Bronson Arroyo, Dirty Water, and the lyric again, Well, I love that dirty water. Oh, Boston, you are my home. So, let's see if you can redeem yourself. Get back to 500 here. The, the next question, D-Man, is... What former major league player was in a band named Sandfrog? Uh, Bernie Williams? That'd be another one that we could have worked into this podcast. I love Bernie Williams' music. It is not Bernie Williams, but this man, a uh, couple of things about him. His, uh, let's see, I don't know if he had any family lineage in the big leagues. He may have, but... He, he hit a huge home run, though I think the ended up being the game winner in the 2002 World Series. Big tall switch hitter. Can you give me the two? Sure. He, he played for a number of teams in the big leagues, namely in those days Anaheim and also Oakland. I'm, not, I'm sorry, for I, I have no clue. That's that's totally okay. There's no need to apologize. Also played in the Atlantic League, which I coach in. His name, Scott Spezio. I, I, didn't even, I didn't even, never even heard of Scott Spezio, so I couldn't even... You haven't? I have not heard of Scott Spezio. Oh, man, he's a, he, was a, he was a bull. I mean, a guy that, that uh, I think he can wrestle a rhinoceros if you asked him to. I mean, he could, <laughs> he'd, he'd do it all. I mean, he, he's a guy that probably played... If I had to guess, he probably played in the big leagues probably seven of, of nine positions. He did it all, switch hitter, uh, big clutch guy. Scott Spezio. So so that's gonna wrap it up. No no need to 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 beat yourself up. You you have an, an Italian exam coming up, you're you're a screenwriter, you're a recording artist, so and you're locked in on game seven of the World Series tonight. So so don't beat yourself up now. Who do you think is going to win tonight? Boy, I, I, I certainly have no idea. I, I know that if you Darvis is pitching, and I think he is, he's going to go in there with a chip on his shoulder. And a guy like that with a chip on his shoulder, that's, uh, that's some tough sledding for any team that he's facing. I'll say that. You know, I, I said you know, yesterday, I said whoever wins game six, obviously the Astros won, they were going to win it. But if the Dodgers can win, 
that have that momentum going in. They're home tonight. I don't know, though. You know, I really don't know. I, 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 I think that Houston has the better team. But like you said, Darvish has a chip on his shoulder. On his shoulder. I hope I hope he pitches well tonight. I really do because of that chip. And I don't know. I just want to see a good game. I think you know. I don't really care who wins as long as it's you know, entertaining. I I think we'll get it. You you pointed to something too. H- having that home field advantage. There is a difference when you're playing at home. It's great for baseball. Too. Yes, it is. It is. I, I wish it would never ever end. But alas, it does. And unfortunately, Donovan. This podcast is coming to an end, but I, I wanted to ask you, in terms of right now, what music are you listening to that's that's not named Coldplay? What am I listening to that's not named Coldplay? Um, you see, let me go. I have my phone right here. I'm going to go on my Spotify. Let me look right now. Let's see real quick. Go for it. Let's see. I listen. I listen to a lot of different stuff. You know, I listen to, you know, electric dance music. I listen to pop music, rock, a little bit of rap, um, really just different stuff, so it's loading, give me one second, um, off the top of my, let's see, I'm going to go down my list. Uh, as you look at that, do you have any recommendations for people? Um, yeah, of course, um, I was, let's see, the last three songs I added on my playlist, uh, the last four, uh, last five, because that last one's interesting. I added Through the Late Night by Travis Scott, All Time Low by John Bellion, the song Forever by Drake with all the features of Kanye, Lil Wayne, Eminem, uh, the song Faded by Alan Walker. And here's an interesting one you're going to appreciate. Oh Mio Bambino Caro by Maria Callalis. Uh, I probably butchered the name, but, which is an old Italian song. So it just shows my diversity in music right there. That's literally a rap, you know, rap, some rap songs, some uh, pop music. An old song. Then the song before that was Sex on Fire by Kings of Leon. So there's the rock music in there. So tons of different stuff in my playlist. You are a medley of tunes. I like different. I, I, for me, it's all about do I like the song? Do I consider the song good? That's what it's about for me. In uh, uh, total enjoyment. D-Man, this has been great. Last question for you. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, through my Instagram, DonovanRusso27. My Twitter, which I believe is SpiderRus. Uh, Facebook, Donovan Russo. And yeah, just, you know, you can search me up on social media. I'm sure you can find me. LinkedIn, Donovan Russo. Um, I think that's all, yeah. I think that's all the social media is out there. But um, yeah, no, thanks for having me and to all the listeners out there. I appreciate you taking the time to listen today. And if you can listen to my album, give it a listen, you can give me a comment, you know, some advice or whatever, some critique. I appreciate it. Um, that'd be uh, wonderful. And you will certainly get it if you don't mind, Donovan. I've also included in the podcast, in the write up, I've posted your SoundCloud link. Is that okay? Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. I forgot even about that. It's, um, yeah, I go, it's Xavier Music. And if you want me to explain that, I know you were asking me during the break why Xavier, but want me to explain that real quick. Please do. So basically, so Xavier is my middle name, and it was just one of those things where. I go by Donovan, obviously, for everything, even my screenwriting. When my dad just had an idea, what if for your music he went by Xavier or whatever. So I, whatever you want to call me, Donovan or Xavier, it doesn't really matter. It says on the on the album Xavier, but on the next one I'll probably say Donovan Xavier Russo. I just thought, you know, it's a different tunnel, different kind of dimension that I am when I do that, so why not use a different name? Or I just thought, you know, why not? You only live once. Why not do it how you want to do it? I think that's clever. Can I call you DX? You can call me whatever you want, bro. I got you. I got you. Whatever you want. Well, Donovan and Xavier, this has been a blast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to me babble for a little bit. You didn't babble. You didn't babble. This was this was pristine. <laughs> I'm just messing around. This was pristine. That this will wrap up episode twenty two of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Donovan and Xavier and I will talk at you all later. Take good care. You have been listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Because impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have. Sitting at my post, pretty close to defeat, approached by my man, metal cleats on concrete. I looked at my watch. It said 635. 
gray hairs on my chin, feeling barely alive. He said, what you got? Me, I had nothing. He took off his hat, and he told me something. He said, as days go on, and many willow in sorrow, change how you think, because we've never seen tomorrow. He raised his arms and unclenched his fists. I look at them. He said, look at this. Palms and fingers, all within these, greatness still wrapped, infinite possibilities. Go where you've never gone, do what's never been done. Two palms, ten fingers. Be a man, my son. The clock, six four six, one more off the tee. We've never seen tomorrow. Turn dreams to reality.